Warning, you may find the following video a little corny. G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me, bringing you another how to grow a ton of video. In this video, I wanna give you my five top tips on how to grow a ton of sweet corn. Let's just get straight into it. This corn here, growing in the bed behind me, is our second crop in the same spot. We've already grown a ton of corn and then used the seed from that to grow another crop just before our winter hits. Corn originated in Mexico, but you probably knew that already. However, there are lots of different types of corn, or sometimes called maize, such as popcorn, dent, flint, flower corn, and old heritage corn. Many of these types of corn taste awful in their normal form and are grown for all sorts of other purposes, such as stock feed, popping corn, making flour, but the main type of corn most of us are used to eating fresh and want to grow is sweet corn. Tip number one, when to grow. The reason why I've made this a top tip is because corn won't perform if it's grown outside of its comfort range. Corn grows best when the days are consistently between 20 to 30 degrees Celsius or 68 to 86 Fahrenheit. We live in a warm climate, the subtropics, and so what I've done is experimented over the years by trying to grow corn through our winter, see how it'd go. And I can tell you now, it's been really bad. I've produced poor results. So conclusion is, corn likes it hot, baby. So if you're gonna grow corn, no matter what climate you live in, grow it at the warmest time of year. If you live in the tropics, you can grow corn all year round but I would plant it through the dry season for best results. And for the rest of us, grow corn when the weather warms up and allow 10 to 12 weeks of growing time through the hottest part of the year. In cool climates, don't plant it too late so the cobs are trying to ripen as winter hits or too early either so that the seedlings suffer trying to establish in a soil that's less than 10 degrees Celsius or 50 Fahrenheit. Tip number two, preparing the soil and fertilizing. Light, free draining soil that's full of organic matter is what corn really loves because it heats up early after winter and it also enables the corn's roots to be able to get a good foothold and grow down and stabilize the plant better. Corn has a shallow root system and this is bad for two reasons. A, it makes the plant inherently unstable or easy to fall over, and B, it struggles in dry conditions when water is lacking. Also, try to site your corn patch in a protected position where possible from high winds, otherwise your plants will struggle to stay upright and pollination won't be as good. Now you can see today it's quite windy and we often get big storms in the subtropics, so I've positioned my corn in the middle of our veggie garden it's surrounded by higher veggie beds and also an orchard on the other side. But even so, we still struggle sometimes keeping our corn plants upright due to strong winds. But that's sort of part of corn growing, unfortunately. Now to fertilizing. With corn, I have found that fertilizing the soil several weeks or even months early, then leaving the bed rest before planting or sowing produces better results than fertilizing at the point of planting. The reason I think fertilizing early works with corn is because corn is a species of grass. And like grass, if your own lawn, you throw a whole heap of nitrogen fertilizer at it, it'll respond well and grow really lush and, and long. But corn itself, you don't want it to grow really fast and spindly and leggy because A, it won't support itself and B, it just won't grow those nice big thick delicious cobs that it should because it's shot up too fast. Tip number three, sowing. I often sow seed direct into the garden bed and also I sow more than I usually expect or need. Just in case pests get them like rodents, mice and rats will dig up the seed or they just fail to come up due to seed viability or whatever. That way I can then thin the seedlings out if required rather than 
try and sow more later. Most people, particularly in cooler climates, sow seed in containers first and then plant the corn out when the conditions are right. This is an effective way of starting corn and getting superior results. Corn doesn't mind at all to be sown in punnets first and then planted out. In fact, that's a really good way of doing it because you can then plant the corn in a little deeper and that way it'll grow extra roots and be a little more secure in ground against wind like this. Block versus row. You might have heard people say they prefer to grow corn in blocks rather than a row because this helps with pollination. What happens is the male flowers at the top of the stem shed pollen spread by the wind onto the silk which grows out of the cob containing the female flowers. Growing in blocks gives this process of pollination a better chance. So if you don't have enough room for a big block of corn and you only have enough for a single row in your garden, well that's fine, give it a go. Another reason could be you're growing in containers and that's fine too. Corn grows well in containers and you might be able to only space those containers out in a row. But if you find later on that the cobs, when you peel back the husk, you find that the kernels aren't formed correctly or not developed well, well that's probably because it hasn't been pollinated correctly. Spacing. The best spacing for corn is about 30 centimetres or a foot apart. Don't bother trying to grow corn really close together because all that happens is they rob each other of light, nutrients and water and you get smaller plants and therefore smaller cobs of corn. So yeah, I've tried it so you don't have to. And the last point under sowing is succession planting. Now if you want to succession plant, that is grow corn a few weeks apart so that it doesn't all mature at once and you've got this big glut of produce, but you can then harvest as the plants mature. That's fine as long as you're in an area with a long growing season that you can stagger with that, that corn going into winter. And also when you are planting out those successive crops of corn, make sure you plant them on the side that gets the most sun and they're not gonna get shaded out by those big, long, high plants that have already started growing and that are well ahead. Tip number four, growing. Always grow more corn than you need because even if it all develops and you end up with a glut, you can always preserve it or give it away to family and friends. They'll love you for it. Watering, as I said earlier, corn has a shallow root system. So ensuring it has regular water and is not allowed to get stressed is vital to grow good cobs and prevent early maturation, resulting in underdeveloped fruit. Damage from pests and disease. One particular little bugger is the earworm caterpillar. It drills in from the top of the cob uh, through the silk and what it does then is it rots it from the top because it starts feeding on the kernels, obviously. So keep an eye out for it by just looking and seeing if there's any droppings around the top of the silk. And if so, harvest that cob early or kill it off organically by squashing it, maybe a bit of prothrum if you want. But I tend to just harvest the cob, cut off the bad bit, and you know, because I find it early, and then we can just eat a good cob of corn. That's no dramas there. But if you leave it too late, that type of pest can really do a lot of damage to the whole cob. Also, you can see here, and probably because I'm growing it late in the season, is this corn's got a bit of rust on it. Now that's okay as long as it doesn't get out of hand and, and kill the plants. But often you'll see a little bit of rust on the leaves of the corn. I would just tend to just leave it go organically and let the corn struggle through it and then get your late harvest. Usually these types of diseases come from growing corn you know, near to the end of the season and pushing the boundaries a bit. If you grow corn at the right time and you give it the right fertiliser, the right growing medium, you'll find that you'll have a lot less pests and diseases on your crop, guarantee you. Birds can also be a bit of a problem in some areas. On our crop, we might get one or two cobs damaged or eaten by birds or crows. That's not enough for me to want to try to net our whole crop. And quite frankly, that's why I grow a ton of it so that when we lose a few or some don't come up at all, 
it's not a big deal. If you're going to fertilize extra or give it a boost during the season, only do it if the plants are looking pale green and lackluster. Otherwise, leave them because under fertilizing is better than over fertilizing for corn. Tip number five, harvesting. It can be pretty tricky sometimes to tell when your corn is ready. The best way to tell is firstly check to see if the silk has browned off. As soon as you see this sign, test a cob by removing a little of the husk at the top revealing the kernels. They should be swollen and plump. If still unsure of ripeness, rupture one or two of the kernels with a fingernail and if the juice is a milky colour, they are ready to harvest. If the juice is clear, they are not ripe yet. If you're going to eat the corn fresh, I would recommend you only harvest as much as you need at a time and leave the other cobs on the plants. As long as this is only over a sort of like two week period because if you leave the cobs on the plants too long, they will begin to get more starchier and less tasty. Corn will also eventually dry out on the plants. And this can be a good thing to experiment with if you wanna preserve a glut of corn to make your own corn flour, even though it's the wrong variety of corn, or a crude polenta, which I've made quite successfully out of sweet corn, or even as a good quality feed for animals, such as chickens and ducks. If you intend to save your own seed, try heirloom varieties. And after harvest, use those stalks left over as mulch back into the garden bed because they'll break down and make a wonderful enriched soil for another crop of corn or some other crop. Well, that's it. Those were my five top tips on how to grow a ton of corn. When to grow, preparing the soil, sowing, growing and harvesting. Do all those things right and you'll grow a ton of corn just like I can. See? That wasn't so corny after all. If you enjoyed the video, give it a big thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and share the video around too, that helps a lot. Another thing, my Patreon, go there and support me on Patreon. You'll find different tier levels where with your support, you'll get access to different things or extra content such as my podcast, and other bits of information separate to this YouTube channel. If you've got any questions or you've got some extra tips for growing corn, I'd love to see them. Whack them down in the comments section below. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now.